A weary ocean traveler returns to the shores of an island paradise. For millennia, great oceanic currents have brought visiting giants to these magical shores. An island where deep sea leviathans roam close to land. greatest oceanic shows on Earth. But why are so many of these great sea creatures drawn to this island? For centuries, Sri Lanka and its hidden treasures have seduced travelers from around the globe. Enticed by tales of rare spices and ancient civilizations, Indian, Arab and European adventurers were drawn to this irresistible island. What they found was a land of extraordinary riches, of foreign gods and faith in nature. With herds of Asian giants, Creatures found nowhere else on Earth. But what they didn't know was that the real treasures of Sri Lanka can be found even before you step foot on its shore. In the Indian Ocean, the island of Sri Lanka stands as a crossroads for all kinds of migrating marine life. Just off the coast is one of the world's biggest gatherings of the largest predator alive. The sperm whale. Nomads of the sea they're almost continuously on the move. Prospectors returning from a world where the sun's rays cannot penetrate. After as long as an hour in the deep, they return to the surface to breathe. Before they dive again, they fertilize the surface. To save energy in the depths, they shut down their non-critical organs, and that includes the ability to defecate. This is one of the only ways that nutrients locked in the world below are returned to life near the top. In the expanse of the open ocean, their most stable reference points are each other. Here off the coast of Sri Lanka, they gather in numbers. Superpods, some of the largest seen anywhere in the oceans. Diving down to over two kilometers, they grapple with giant squid in the depths. 
These are hungry hunters. Each one of them can eat around a ton of food per day. It's thought that they can stun their prey by producing some of the loudest sounds of any living creature. But their life in the world below, where the pressure would crush a human, has never been filmed and remains a mystery. Somehow, the rich waters of Sri Lanka can satisfy the appetites of so many visiting giants. Circling this island is an ocean like no other, all thanks to a unique combination of natural and geological quirks. At the tip of India, Sri Lanka is the southernmost point of a huge tapering continental landmass. The island has a mountainous heart, bound by a ring of fertile coastal plains. Rivers litter the land, and together with strange weather patterns, these are the perfect ingredients for an underwater paradise. To the east, west and south, the ocean stretches unbroken for thousands of miles. It's not just whales. Schools of fish and huge flocks of seabirds cross thousands of miles of ocean to reach these shores. For some drifters, Sri Lanka is the first site of land for years, possibly decades. She is one of five species of sea turtle that are born on these shores. The moment she's waited 20 years for is near. She spent the years riding the currents of the deep ocean. Now she must gain strength. So she's returned to the sun-drenched shallows, more fruitful than the open water. Grazing on seagrass and weeds, whipped up by the waves. science has no idea how, but she knows exactly the beach to which she must return. The beach she was born on. And on which she will lay her eggs. The secret to Sri Lanka's fertile waters actually lies 100 miles away. It's a story that begins on the highest peaks. Sri Lanka is a land powered by rain. Warm monsoon winds sweep down from the Bay of Bengal, bringing moisture from far at sea. As they hit the central highlands, they rise, they cool, and the northeast monsoon begins.
It's weeks since a single drop of rain fell. But when the monsoon clouds finally burst, the highlands are inundated. Meters of rainfall in just a few months. giving birth to 105 major rivers. A staggering number, considering the island's small size. It's these rivers that are key to the rich seas surrounding Sri Lanka. Starting life in mysterious high-altitude cloud forests. Leaves and debris are washed down the mountains. They work their way through impenetrable jungles. Collecting sediment and nutrients from the earth. En route, they water vast plantations of green gold. Famous Ceylon tea. across the vast plains that circle the island. Where great wild herds are sustained by the life-giving water. And in turn, they add their waste to the rich mix of nutrients. They finally mix with the sea in brackish swamps, the mangroves. A transitional no man's land between the sea and the coast. Their leaves have special glands which secrete salt crystals allowing the trees to cope with the water from the encroaching tides. Rising out of the waterlogged swamp floor, roots reach from the earth like dead men's fingers. Below the surface, mangroves are vital nurseries for young fish, the roots providing protection from predators. But with so much competition, one mangrove specialist has developed an extraordinary way of getting a bite to eat. It begins with his dual action eyes. The bottom part of his eye is used for living down in the murky brown water. But on top, his eyes are suited for spying into the world above. presses his tongue down against a groove at the bottom of his mouth, forming a gun barrel. And he fires. He misses. He doubles back and lines up again. For a young archer fish, it can take a few attempts to get his prey. He has to learn to judge distortions and reflections in the water. Archer can produce a watery arrow that is up to six times stronger than his muscle power.
dawn on the... The island's most ostentatious seasonal visitor has arrived. Greater flamingos, named for the flashes of flame-like pink on their wings. They follow the receding tide further out into the lagoon. The water must be just the right depth. Wiggling their legs, they stir up the mud. Dipping their bills, they sift out shrimp and algae, which thrive in the river mouth. Males squabble and jostle for position in the group. They can grow large on this rich soup, with the biggest males reaching nearly a meter and a half in height. They say you are what you eat, and it is the carotene pigment from the crustaceans and algae that gives their plumage its distinctive pink. Minerals and organic matter from hundreds of rivers and streams nourish coastal communities. Sri Lanka's high rates of freshwater discharge causes a riot at sea. Fleets of fishing boats take to the waves. Endless schools of fish lie in wait. Hunters arrive. Tuna. The schools dart out of the way of the predators. Thousands of shimmering bodies try to confuse the hunters. The schools pulse in one coordinated move. But the tuna are themselves in danger from above. For these fishermen, the big money is in tuna, if they can find them. They're impossible to spot from the surface, but the fishermen are guided by the ocean's greatest acrobats. Spin a dolphin are often found swimming alongside schools of tuna. Superpods of thousands of dolphins congregate on the country's coast. Young calves cling to their mother's sides. Spinner dolphins live up to their name, rotating spectacularly as they leap meters out of the water. They start attempting it from an early age, but it's an acquired skill. Why spinners spin is a mystery. Some think it's for communication. Others believe it removes parasites stuck to the dolphin's skin. But perhaps it's just because they can. These huge gatherings of dolphins are some of the largest anywhere. But with overfishing by local and Indian fishermen, they may be a shadow of what they once were.
The monsoon rains leave rich pickings in their wake. Like a gold rush, everyone prospects the beach. The daily catch brings egrets. Slyly, they bide their time, waiting for the right moment to steal a bite. But some still prefer to catch their own. In the lagoons, flocks of cormorants die for fish. Working in small groups, they drive a school together. Breaking the bones of his catch helps it to slip down. But if he's not quick enough, he'll lose his meal to thieves. Most water birds have feathers that repel water, but not the cormorant. It makes him an excellent diver. Although his feathers do need to be hung out to dry, Flocks of cormorants, egrets, and painted storks gather in large, excited breeding colonies. When food is abundant, it's the safest time to raise a family. For their neighbor, the white-bellied sea eagle, it's also time to nest. These graceful flyers mate for life. Each year, acrobatic flights in unison renew the pair's bonds. These heavy birds are the largest on the island and can reach up to four and a half kilos. So finding a tree suitable for the whole family isn't easy. A sacred fig tree, towering above the cultivated land, has been allowed to survive. It makes a perfect roost. They've used the same nest, now a huge pile of sticks, year after year. The pair have a six-week-old chick. As he's got older, they're leaving longer and longer gaps between bringing him meals, perhaps to entice him into the air. He's yet to be fed today, but his parents seem to have other concerns. Eagles don't like monkeys and the feeling is mutual. Crows and eagles tend not to get on too well either. The sacred tree is home to all sorts. And some residents, like palm squirrels, make happy neighbors. The same can't be said for crows. Crows will mob the eagles relentlessly. They see the predators as a threat. The truth is, the white-bellied sea eagle survives almost entirely on food caught at sea. The white belly of the adults blurs with the bright sky as they descend on their prey. From below, it's rendered invisible. He 
he's not quite ready. At last, fresh fish. But after being kept hungry for so long, a peck on Dad's leg shows his frustration. In a few more weeks, he could be fishing for his own dinner. Deceived by an illusion of endless bounty, the fishermen here seem to constantly work the sea. They continue to haul in their nets at night. It's the driest time of year, and the seas are calm. Our expectant mother knows her time has come. Hauling herself up beyond the reaches of the waves. On land, her flippers are cumbersome. She was born on this beach, and now she's returned to lay eggs of her own. Tonight, she continues a ritual performed by her ancestors. This scene has played out since prehistory. She carefully buries her clutch. Her eggs must remain dry. They'll remain underneath the sand for seven weeks. And she returns to the waves. Different species use the same beaches. Life goes full circle within just a few moments. While one species is laying, another is hatching. An eager olive ridley sea turtle is the first of her siblings to break the surface. They've remained buried for several weeks. They've waited until the sand cooled and they knew it was night. Soon she's joined by her brothers and sisters and the sand is a writhing mass of baby turtles. They know instantly which way to head. Perhaps it's the slope of the sand or a faint glow of white on breaking waves. But somehow they sense the sea. Only a few centimeters in size, they face a migration before they reach the water. An exhausting start to life. Crawl down the beach. The hatchling sets an internal compass, 
imprinting the location of her home. Most will make it in darkness. Once there is light in the sky, the predators will wake. Crows are gathering. A baby turtle would be a decent breakfast. With this species facing a high risk of extinction, Every one of this clutch is precious. Scientists estimate, even for those who make it to the waves, just one in a thousand will survive to adulthood. The last straggler, exhausted, must rest before the final push. A fatal pause. More dangers may await beyond the breakers, but those making it off the beach give these endangered animals a chance. In the southwest of the country, the second monsoon announces its arrival. The land's drenched, the rivers pumping nutrients out into these seas. These lands are blessed with two monsoons, one the northeast and one the southwest. Meaning there is always rain somewhere on the island. After the monsoon, waves roll in exhausted. But the waters are left refreshed by this second seasonal influx of nutrients. Like giant human herrings, Sri Lanka's iconic stilt fishermen wait for the arrival of schools of mackerel and herring. The origins of this unusual practice are lost in myth. According to legend, after the Second World War, an inventive fisherman was finding it hard to get his own rock to fish from. Making use of scrap metal poles left by departing troops, he made his own perfect perch, much to the envy of his competitors. The practice soon caught on. Below the waves, infinite schools of big mouth mackerel block out the sun. Jaws gaping wide. With one coordinated scoop, they filter plankton from the newly recharged water. Shoals of reef fish, yellow striped fusiliers, and damselfish mingle. Only this isn't a reef at all. Unnatural angles and perfect circles hint at past lives. Cargo ships. Trawlers and world warships litter the bottom of Sri Lanka's coast. 
The largest port in Sri Lanka is exposed. Strong seas and monsoon winds make these treacherous waters. But that keeps the current circulating. And before long, shipwrecks are seized by colonists. All manner of creatures take up residence. The wrecks provide food as well as shelter. Fish feed on algae and weeds growing on the hull. It gets crowded down here. A damselfish guards her patch and crop of algae. The wreck's very own gardener, she weeds her crop. Removing unwanted algae and seaweed from her patch helps the algae she likes to grow. The faint red circle on this mast is a patch of red algae, which she can digest far more easily than other types. But it's popular with trespassers too. such close proximity to other fish means some unusual ways of getting a meal and strange relationships have evolved. It's not just gardeners, there are cleaners here too. This somewhat frantic blue streaked grass is advertising for business. By swimming strangely, moving up and down and waggling his tail, he's letting passers-by know that he and his team of females are accepting clients. Yellow-striped fusiliers notice his dance. Small groups break away from the school and stop at the Rass's cleaning station. Soon, there is a rush on. The fusiliers get groomed, and the ras get a meal. Without this help, it's impossible to remove parasites or dead tissue. The male is larger than the female members of his harem, but amongst the females, there is a strict hierarchy. Constant power struggles and fights are common. If the male dies, the highest ranking female will change sex, and she takes the top job. That new life so quickly colonizes the wrecks is testament to the richness of Sri Lanka's coastal shallows. When combined with a geological quirk, this richness creates a unique coast, possibly unlike anywhere else in the world. The continental shelf is particularly narrow. And along some stretches, the deep ocean pinches in extremely close to the shore. The presence of deep water so close to land gives access to a true ocean giant. Upwellings created by the meeting of deep cold and shallow warm water bring plankton and nutrients up from the deep. With the double monsoon constantly pumping more nutrients out to sea, this all attracts the largest animal to have ever existed. This is one of the only places on Earth where blue whales can be found so close to shore all year round. Their tongue can weigh more than an elephant, and they can gulp down four tons of food in a single day.
Huge, 25 meter long, mysterious creatures. Normally found voyaging the world's oceans. Emerging from the waves, they bring hitchhiking whale suckers to the surface. But these giants will not be going far. They seem to like Sri Lanka. And the waters of this island have a unique sound. For some reason, the blue whales here have a different song. They've been repeatedly recorded, making calls with four notes. This may be one of the few places on Earth they've made a permanent home a tribute to the richness of these waters. It's possible Sri Lanka has its own unique subspecies, evolved to exploit this fertile territory. The existence of Sri Lanka's population of the most mighty of marine mammals has only been studied by scientists in the last couple of decades. The locals, of course, knew of the giants in their waters. Some even believe the local Buddhist faith is what protected them and much of Sri Lanka's wildlife. But why they are here is only just starting to be understood. To sustain so many whales, Sri Lanka's coast must remain fertile and productive. Yet the fate of this sea is tied to the land and the rivers that feed it. Sri Lanka's forests are shrinking fast. Its wild herds are squeezed in to an ever smaller share of the island. But ancient Sri Lanka 